Hello everybody and welcome to the Winsock non-blocking server tutorials. Uh, this is going to be tutorial number one. What I've done is I've gone ahead and copied some stuff from our previous server that is just review so that way we don't spend too much time going over this. So this is just going to be a vector of connections and I don't have a connection class so we're just using sockets. Uh, this is going to be Winsock startup. That's nothing new. Uh, this is going to be we're creating the socket to listen for new connections on, it's calling it listen socket. This is just going to be our server information. It's going to be port 8888. Um, anyone can connect. We're not loopbacking to ourselves. Uh, this is where we're binding. We need to bind if we want to be able to listen on the socket. And this is where we are listening on the socket with a max backlog of however many uh, 7 and 7 F's is. So next what we need to do is we want to set our uh, socket into non-blocking mode. The way that we do that whoops, is like this. We create a U long and we set it to 1 and then we just pass it into this IOCTL socket socket function, we pass in the socket we want to put in non-blocking mode, and then we pass in uh, the mode. Now the first thing we want to do in this loop is we want to check for new connections. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to create a socket, call it new connection, and we're going to call accept on that listen socket. Don't need to pass in anything for those two arguments, we'll just pass in null. And we will say if uh, new connection is invalid socket, if new connection is not properly accepted, then it didn't work. Otherwise, I'll do that otherwise. I'll do that differently, I mean. We'll say if new connection was properly accepted. So if it's not equal to invalid socket, then what we will do is we will add it to our list of connections. And we will just, I guess, print out the socket value. Otherwise, so I've made this um, client simulator, and what it does is it just connects and then it sends a four byte buffer that says ABC every two seconds. So when I go up here, let's see, we're going to have a connection count of one. And we need to run our server. And you see we had got new connection 120, but we're getting spammed with connection failed. So you could say, oh, well, all we have to do is comment that out. And that addresses that issue. But it doesn't really address that issue because the problem is we are constantly iterating and we're trying to accept even though there's nothing to be accepted. So how will we address this? We will use something called an FD set and the one we're going to use is called the read FD set. Well at least for this operation we'll use all three because there's a read, a write, and an exception but we're going to just use the read in this tutorial. So what we're going to do is, the first thing is we're going to zero our FD set every single iteration. This clears it out. Then we want to add our uh, listen socket to the FD set. The way that we do this is we call it FD set and we pass in uh, the socket and then we pass in the set.
Next, what we want to do is we want to call a function called select. Now what select will do is it will allow us to check if any uh, if anything that we're monitor monitoring for has happened in our FD sets. So on this example, when we get a new connection, the socket that we're listening on um, will have a message, I guess, on the read FD set. So the way that we do this is we call select. The first argument does nothing on WinSock. Uh, the second argument is our read FD set, or a reference to it. Uh, the next argument is our write FD set, which we don't have one, so we're just going to pass in null for these. And then our timeout. We want this to wait forever, so we'll just pass in null. Now what's going to happen is we're going to get down here and until we get a new connection, we are not going to go to the next iteration. So let's go ahead and test this out. Or let me uncomment that, keep that. So let's rerun the client and we get new connection and great, so that worked out. Now let's say that we also want to be receiving those uh, messages that are being sent. Well, what we can do is we can call receive afterwards and we should actually be doing this for all of the connections. And it was a uh, buffer of size four. And I guess yeah, if we receive more than one byte, we will just print it out. What we have to do next is we have to be monitoring uh, this connection. So the way that we're going to be doing that is right up here, we are going to have a for loop. And we are going to add every single connection to the read set. The same way that we added the listen socket, you're going to add every single connection socket. This will let us monitor whenever there's data to be read from that connection. And that way select will, will know if something happens on those connections. So we'll run this. And we'll run the simulator. And you see what happens is <clears throat> we're getting the messages. There's another problem. Now we're getting connection failed. And what's happening is we are getting a message from that connection so we get past the select. Well, no matter what's happening, whether we're getting a message or it's a new connection trying to connect, we are uh, trying to accept a new connection and then we are trying to read a message from the client. The problem is we are not checking um, if the listen socket's actually inside of our read FD set. And if our um, connection socket was inside the read FD set before we try to receive. So here's how we address that. What we are going to do is we're going to call something called FD is set. And the first argument is the socket. Second argument is the FD set. I don't know the right terminology for it. So if the listen socket is what caused uh, us to get past the select, then we will try to accept the new connection. Otherwise, we will check for each connection if FD is set 
dual pass in that connection. And now we will only try to receive for the connection if that connection is, side of the, is inside of the read FD set. So let's run this again. And I'll run the client simulator. You see we get a new connection and then it's sending the messages ABC. Now there's one more thing I want to cover before we end this tutorial. What happens if the client disconnects? Well, surprisingly nothing. And the only reason that nothing happened was because, let's see, I have this if statement to make sure that at least one byte was received, but we're not noticing that the client disconnected. If I didn't have this if statement and I was just printing out the buffer, then let's see what would happen. Send a message. Okay, then disconnect. You see we get spammed with the message. So what we need to do is we need to address this. The way that we're going to address this is we're going to look at um, what receive returns. So we're storing the return value from receive in a variable called retval. We're going to see if the return value is socket error. What we're going to check is if the last error that happened in our Winsock API uh, was not that it would block. then that means that the connection was closed. So what we will do is we will close the socket. We'll print out lost connection to leave that right there. And then lastly, we will remove the uh, connection from the vector. And then we will, since we are removing it from the vector and we want to iterate through all of the connections, we need to decrement i because the connection that is after this one will get moved into its spot and we'll end up skipping it if we don't do this. After that, we can just continue. And something else we need to check is we need to check if receive returns zero. Because if receive returns zero, then it's the same situation. We lost the connection and we need to continue. So let's try this out again. We're going to run the server and then we are going to uh, run the client. And there we go. We have it uh, sending messages and as soon as it disconnects, we get lost connection to 120. So that is all that we are going to go over for this tutorial. It's just to get the very basics with setting up a non-blocking uh, server. So we're accepting new connections and we are receiving just a four byte message. In the next tutorial, we're going to go over um, the right FD set and the exception FD set. And then we are also going to look at, uh, I don't know, we might get into actually structuring this to clean it up because it looks like kind of like a mess right now but i'm not sure if we'll get into that tutorial too but that's all we're going to cover for now and thanks for watching